Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We are going to make, I think, the most iconic of the salsas. At least that's what we think in the United States. The salsa mexicana, which is probably better known in the United States as a pico de gallo. But in Mexico, it's Mexican salsa because not only is the flavor combination an iconic one, but it has the colors of the Mexican flag, making it even more iconic because you have red of tomato, white of onion, and the green of green chili and some cilantro. So let's talk about how you make this salsa. And proportion-wise, you have to come up with your own proportions on this because I will tell you that everybody likes a slightly different proportion in it. Um, I won't ever recommend you're making this salsa unless you have tomatoes that are ripe all the way to the core. So your standard issue uh, uh, grocery store tomatoes are probably not going to be the right ones for this. The tomato does give you that beautiful sweet complexity of flavor. That's why you really want to make sure that you have ripe tomatoes. Otherwise your salsa mexicana will not be very good at all. Um, the uh, second ingredient that we're going to put in here after we put this complexity of sweetness that the tomato will bring to it is to put some white onion. In the United States where everybody goes wrong so fast, they grab a yellow onion. A yellow onion and a white onion have very different flavors. You just think about a recipe that has a, a say a yellow onion in it, you wouldn't grab a a uh, red onion and replace it. I mean, you might think about it, but in our minds, we think of those as very different flavors. Same goes for white versus the yellow onion. Now, this is a really large white onion. I'm only going to use about a third of it, so I'm just going to cut it in half there and then cut it. Um, I have my own technique again for cutting the onion, so bear with me with this thing. Um, I cut crosswise like this. And then I cut using the, the, uh, the actual form of the onion itself to help me get those really small pieces. Now, white onion is a very crisp flavor, and uh, as opposed to the yellow onion, the white onion will give us not only a really beautiful, beautiful, um, bright flavor, but a crisp texture. We're looking for both of those things with this. So that's about my third of an onion. This I'm going to eye because I think, and you have to learn to do this too. You look at your tomato that you have cut up here. And for me, the right amount of onion is going to be about that much of it. I can, I'm going to keep this off to the side and I'm going to see if I want to add more a little bit later on but that's about the right amount for me. You might like more onion in it. Now, some of you are going to be really surprised I did not take this over to the sink and rinse it because that to me is the most critical thing in making a really good salsa mexicana that you rinse the onion. It makes it more crisp and it takes away that sort of strong oniony flavor that could overwhelm this salsa. I'm not doing that right here only because I'm going to take this salsa mexicana into a different place and I'm going to cook it. Okay, usually you wouldn't cook this kind of a salsa, but I'm going to cook it so I don't have to do that rinsing part of it. Now, let's talk about the chili that's going to go in here. I'm sure a lot of you would say first thing that you have to do with your chili is to cut the stem off of it and then cut it lengthwise and then take all the seeds and the veins out. People in Mexico don't really do that. I mean, what they're looking for is the capsaicin heat of the chili. So why would you want to take it out? Now, some of you may think that that's absolutely essential, but what I'm going to do, because I want all of that heat, is to cut it in half lengthwise again, and then I cut it all up, down, I mean, seeds, veins, and all. And I'm going to use just a simple 
um, slicing technique here where because I'm right-handed I've got my knife in my right hand and I'm holding all of the bunched up chili in my left hand and I am cutting through it just like that. I'm going to do the same to the other chili here. Now I'm going to scoop all this in there. This is going to make a spicy a spicy salsa mexicana but you see as I've gotten it layered in here that we have the green and we have the the white and we have the red so there's our Mexican flag but we're going to add one more green element to it by grabbing some of this cilantro cutting it in a very specific style. So everybody thinks of salsa mexicana as being one of the absolute basic things. You just chop up some vegetables, throw them together and you're done. It's how you chop them up. How, first of all, how you choose them, getting the right ingredients, and then how you chop them up. That will be the difference between an okay salsa mexicana and an amazing salsa mexicana. So grab the bunch of cilantro that you have and then sort of bunch it up here. Get that little piece out of there. Uh, bunch it up like this, and then use that same technique that I used in slicing the serrano, and just move your hand back, your holding hand, my left hand, back as I, I never let pick up the knife blade at all. I'm just cutting right down, and you'll notice that I'm doing it stems and leaves and all and we'll put that in there and of course you always have to season your salsa mexicana with salt and also with lime i'm not doing the lime right now again because i'm going to use this salsa mexicana to make another dish so it's a little bit different but you want to season it nicely with the uh with the salt and the lime at this point and then here's the thing that a lot of people don't think about. You got to let it sit for about 20 minutes before you would serve it as a raw salsa. And why? Because you want the salt to pull out the juices of the tomato and then everything will mingle together and it'll pull out some of the onion juices it'll pull out some of the chili juices now it looks pretty good to me I have this last little bit of onion over here and I think it can take most of that onion and we have a gorgeous salsa mexicana now that's very classic season it with the salt let it sit for 20 minutes season it with some lime to kind of perk it up and you're ready to go if you've chopped everything really small it will be incredibly excellent well if you started with the right ingredients let's talk about garlic some people like to put garlic in here and I run hot and cold on garlic in a salsa mexicana I'm gonna do it today because I'm gonna use this salsa mexicana as a cooked sauce uh, for another dish um, but I'm popping off the the skin of it here this looks like several cloves all stuck together so I'll pry those guys apart here and then I'm gonna chop that up and add it too that's all up your own discretion so we've got slices across putting a couple cloves of garlic in here and then I'm gonna just use the rocking and the chopping um, movement here constantly scooping the chopped garlic back up getting it off of my knife blade and chopping again like this until I get it really really fine okay so now we've got that I'm gonna throw that in here I'm gonna turn this big pot here on over high heat I want to heat that up and I'm gonna do something very simple with this I'm gonna make a mussels dish turning this salsa mexicana into a beautiful cooked flavorful broth for these mussels uh, the first thing that I have to do is to put a fair amount of olive oil in here this is very much a Baja California this is like you drive down the coast from San Diego to Ensenada and you go to one of the restaurants that's right there on the Ensenada piers and I've coated the bottom of this with about a quarter of a cup of really good Baja olive oil and 
when it gets hot enough to make this salsa sizzle, it's already sort of sizzling because it's kind of, you can hear that, okay. Now I'm going to put this mixture in here and still cooking it over a high heat here. I'm going to leave some of the juice back in the bowl. I can add that to this mixture later, but I want this to cook quickly and reduce really well. Okay, so stirring that around. This, by the way, cooked salsa mexicana um, on a big plancha with some shrimp is unbelievably good. Or maybe the scallops because they do so many scallops there in Baja. Now I have some of the Baja mussels. You might be surprised to think that a place like Ensenado would produce mussels and clams and scallops because we think of those as cold water uh, uh, animals. So the truth is that the water in Ensenada Bay is incredibly cold. So they do grow some of the best mussels in the world. And we can easily find them in Chicago. If you ask your fishmonger, they may be able to get them for you too. But you want to make sure that you store your mussels right. I do them in a perforated pan with ice down on them. And I don't cover them because they need oxygen to stay alive. But they'll stay for several days like this. I just have them in a perforated pan so that all of the ice as it melts will drip down to the bottom. So I'm going to put these into the pan once this mixture gets reduced and thick and starts to brown. Okay, you can see that it's really reduced now. I want to see some browning going on in this pan. You won't get a ton of browning on the vegetables themselves, but just a little bit. Now, because Baja is a place that they do lots of artisan beers as well as big commercial brands of beer, I'm going to do this with beer. Um, the, I'm using a, the Modelo Negra, which is, you know, very malty and sweet. But you could go with the Baja, the famous Baja Tecate brew, uh, which would give it a really light, crisp taste. You just don't want to use anything that's got much hops in it because the hops will turn it bitter and it won't be pleasant to eat. Now you can see that these mussels are ready to go in while that is coming to a boil. I am going to throw these mussels in here. We have a couple of pounds of them. So just get those guys right into the pot. And then I'm going to cover it and I'm going to let them steam in this for several minutes until they're all open. After they've been going for a minute or two, stir them up just to make sure everything is getting in contact with the liquid and then let them finish steaming. Okay, it looks like these guys are done now. So I'm going to turn off the heat. Boy, does that smell good. We got to season it though. So I just got to taste a little bit of this broth, which is going to taste very um, beautiful with the seared salsa mexicana beer and then all the juices from those mussels. Now the mussels will add some saltiness to it. So it might not take too much salt here. Um, Actually, it doesn't take very much salt at all because they have released some of their saline quality into this mixture. So I'm just going to stir it now. And we remember we did have some salt in the salsa mexicana. Bring up some of that beautiful broth. I like to serve these just straight in the same container that I have cooked them in. So I'm going to set these out here. I've got some toasted bread to serve with them. And then I will just take some of the cilantro leaves and tear those up and sprinkle those down over the top of it. And boy, I wish there was smell a vision because this smells so incredibly delicious right now. There you have it. Mussels a la Mexicana in the style of Baja California. Thank you.